As you know, we need to make Colorado a more affordable place to live. Uh, greatest state in the country. Um, that's the good news. The bad news is the secret's gotten out and it's driven home prices up. And we have artificial constraints on supply and we can't fix all of that today, but we are proud to take a bold step forward. I wanna thank our elected leaders who are here with us today. We have Representative Iman Judah, Representative Steve Woodrow, Commissioner uh, Tamara Pogue from Summit County, Commissioner Dan Williams from Teller County, Commissioner Kristen Stevens from Larimer County, Commissioner Eva Henry from Adams County, and City Councilman Juan Marcano from the city of Aurora. There are many, many others uh, who are obviously supportive of this. Did I miss any elected officials, by the way? Um, I, did I say, I said Amon Judah. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> Twice, you deserve it. And ladies and gentlemen, Amon Judah. Um, no. The, uh, and, and there are many others, but we just had, uh, you know, we, we want to show that we are doing what we can as a state um, to move forward and remove barriers from housing. There's things that we're able to do to uh, deliver more housing sooner. And that's exactly what today's executive order is all about. It represents a broad coalition of folks uh, that are really dedicated to making Colorado more affordable to live. Um, this action helps address this issue by ensuring that the state piece of this, which is generally state funded grants and loans for housing projects, is turned around quicker. We're gonna get from 240 day turnaround average uh, at DOLA for loans under this executive order to 90 day turnaround. Uh, yes. And we're very excited about getting the money out there soon. We are also gonna make sure that uh, we know that the uh, alternatives that people often feel, you know, no growth or growth at any cost. Ne neither one of those are winning propositions for most Coloradans. What they want to see is smart growth, growth that works, growth that aligns with our values and fundamentally with livability. And so this coordination between a number of different state agencies that haven't always been involved with housing, we have members of my cabinet here from the Office of Economic Development, the Department of Transportation, Department of Local Affairs, so many uh, different areas of state government to make sure that we are able to maximize uh, the smart planning and growth around how we uh, maintain the great quality of life in Colorado, meaning that we take into account transit and traffic considerations, water efficiency, open space, uh, all, of these ish all of these aspects that make Colorado a great place to live. And we wanna make sure as part of our overall housing strategy uh, that the state is uh, supportive of that we align and bring to the table these basic values. We want to achieve more sustainable and affordable development in Colorado. This order will direct the relevant state agencies, and that's the Energy Office, the Office of Economic Development, Transportation, Natural Resources, Local Affairs, Public Health and Environment, and Personnel and Administration to evaluate really everything they do that touches housing, grants, policies, plans, procedures, rules, including utilization of state land, uh, to that they support local governments and regional governments and nonprofits to ensure that they uh, align with our goals of delivering more housing now and improving livability. Uh, improving li livability is really the, the short version of how we grow in a way that doesn't increase traffic or worsen air quality, is more water efficient, uh, all of these values that we have. It's fundamentally about our quality of life, about livability in our state. And we need to make sure that as we make housing more affordable, we do it in a way that makes Colorado an even more amazing place to live with dynamic communities, more Coloradans that are able to live on transit corridors or walk to work or live near work. Uh, and that's the, uh, the Colorado that we wanna make sure is a big part of our future and we wanna lean into that as a state. The executive order also directs the Department of Local Affairs and Division of Housing to draft and execute their contracts for grants and loans by uh, within 90 days, by July of 24. Uh, we're gonna hit 120 days by the end of this calendar year. Uh, it's currently about 240 days. So I think, especially as many of us uh, want local governments to move faster, it's very important that the state has that moral authority that says, hey, guess what? We're moving faster because housing is such a crisis. We're gonna turn around the support that we provide for housing within 90 days. And of course, we want uh, our other partners to, uh, to do that as well, reduce red tape, streamline processes, deliver more housing now for Colorado that is in dire need of affordable options. Uh, the choice in front of us isn't between growth and no growth. It's between 
smart growth or unplanned growth that makes Colorado less affordable, less livable, further taxing our water resources and our open space. Uh, and the step today is a major step towards affordability, quicker turnaround, more housing now, but also a thoughtful approach to how we grow as a state. Today's action, we're working to make sure the state is doing our part to support strategic, sustainable affordability for Colorado's future. And of course, the people of our state expect us to deliver more housing choices that are within their budget. That means for rent or purchase, it means at all levels. So Coloradans can stay and live close to where their jobs are, in the communities they love. And of course, we protect the things that we care most about our state, our open space, our water, our quality of life. And of course, the state plays a critical role in the broader housing picture, uh, along with local communities. Uh, this is one important step. It's also important to know, of course, no executive order alone will solve our housing crisis. But in leaning in, it's important that the state lead by example. In streamlining processes, reducing red time, re reducing red tape, making sure that the state is not only not a barrier to more housing, but is a partner to delivering more housing options now for the residents of our state. We're gonna to continue to build on this step. We look forward to working side by side with a variety of stakeholders. Many of them are here. Of course, our partners in the legislature, our partners in local government, uh, to develop solutions that address the very real housing challenges that so many people in our state face every day. I look forward to the work ahead to make sure that Colorado remains the best place to live, to raise a family, to grow a business, uh, and to thrive. In a moment, we will sign the document, but I'm happy to take a couple questions. Mary Ann. Yeah, so given that this is an executive order, uh, it means that we're going to prioritize our existing resources around meeting these goals that are articulated in this executive order. So, uh, you know, we believe that getting the money out the door to build more housing now should be the top priority, Division of Housing, OEDIT, DOLA, really how the Department of Housing is, is in DOLA. OEDIT is a separate agency, but also relevant because of 123, Marianne, so it's, it's both. So. Um, this is more important than ever before because of 123, additional funds for housing at the state level. Uh, we want to make sure that we reduce red tape, streamline the process, and internally focus on getting it out the door to build more housing now as a top, a top operational priority of the agency. I'm still not getting yeah. just how DOLA is going to reduce by 150 days. Sure, by prioritizing our resources as the top goal of turning this around and getting the money out. Mark? Uh, your land use bill earlier this year uh, obviously failed uh, in the state legislature. Is this an executive action to basically accomplish the same thing without the zoning? And would you ever try and take the zoning issue over that? Well, certainly uh, the, the efforts around land use reform are continuing. Um, I think that there's a much stronger statewide discussion about all the barriers to housing that exist at the local level, at the state level, at the private level. Uh, and I think it's important for the state to lead by example. If we want to be part of the conversations about how to remove barriers to housing at the local level, we should show that the state is doing everything that we can to get money out quickly and to align uh, housing with our livability goals, reducing traffic, water conservation, and others. The goal, though, of that land use bill was to increase affordability, to increase affordable housing, things like that. And now this is an executive action to try and accomplish Well, this, this piece really addresses the state role. Um, and again, there's a lot of ongoing efforts. Looking forward to continuing to work with Representative Woodrow, Representative Judah, uh, many other champions. But I think in all of those, it's very important that the state do two things. One is lead by example. If we're asking local governments to turn around applications quicker and build more housing, we should make sure that the state is in fact leading and meets that 90-day turnaround for projects that we support. Uh, and we want others to move faster too. Uh, we also want to make sure just as that in an inner jur uh, jurisdictional way, we look at transit and traffic, water utilization, open space as important values that inform 
uh, the use of state resources, which is part of the overall housing solution. Of course, uh, the state tends to fund uh, projects that include a uh, affordable housing with a capital A component, whether that's 100% or mixed use, uh, and, and that's the piece that the state touches. There's also, of course, a strong need for market housing at all levels, especially entry level uh, in many parts of our state. So when you say entry level, you may refer to certified home buyers? Yes, I, I, would, I, would, I would say that. What, what has often, uh, well now we're, we're, you know, again, our, our executive order is focused on the more affordable side, uh, but certainly what often has not allowed to be built and doesn't exist in our state is housing that is on the more affordable end, let's say 200, 300 thousands rather than 500, 600 thousand. So there's a need for housing across the board, but there's a particular need for, uh, for home ownership entry level, uh, as well as of course for more units that people can afford to rent who aren't yet ready to purchase. Governor, given the scope of the problem here, uh, put this executive order in context for me. How much is yeah. that going to happen? This executive order is doing everything the state can do with existing authority to turn around more housing quicker for addressing the housing crisis that so many residents of our state face. Getting money out the door significantly quicker and in housing time is money. Uh, it simply adds to cost when there are delays and that, whether that's at, that's at both the local level and the state level. We are through this going to commit to dedicate our resources and our laser-like focus to turn around money and applications and grants fast and then secondly, to align them to how we grow, meaning maximizing the number of units, uh, maximizing livability, and the various factors that contribute to livability for the residents of our state. How are you evaluating your success? So part of it is the reporting to us by the end of the year. So we'll look forward to, uh, first of all, we want to make sure our agencies meet the goals that are committed to in terms of reducing red tape, streamlining processes, and getting the uh, uh, loans and, and grants out. But we also very much look forward to, I think for the first time ever in Colorado history, really looking at how each of our agencies that are adjacent to housing impact housing. Those reports will be delivered by the end of December and then taking a thoughtful next step about how we can further streamline the process for all of the various aspects of the state involvement uh, with housing. Mm -hmm. So I want to mm -hmm. digest a little bit of message. I'm sorry, my paper may not be terribly strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how do you think a number more some person out there can yes. digest this message? So, sure. what are the benefits yeah. that, that I can put in my pile of people out there? Yes. Are you with uh, Telemundo or who are you with? Uh, the best one. With, with which one? The best one. Okay. <laughs> the best one? You want me to answer in Spanish? Uh, you, you can. Or try to answer in Spanish? Okay. Um, um, este regla nueva va a um, dar el dinero más rápido a cons para construir más casas y apartamentos pronto en las partes del estado que necesitamos más lugares para vivir, especialmente en, en lugares cerca de servicios de autobuses y del tren. Y queremos dar la oportunidad para vivir uh, más afordable uh, cerca de puestos y cerca de uh, transportación. And, uh, how much money we're talking about? So this is more important than before because of 123. So the state administers significant money, money uh, through sister agencies, CHAZA, through Housing Development Authority, and now through the Office of Economic Development, uh, additional resources with 123. We want to make sure that we have faster turnaround to build more housing now going from 240 days down to 90 days, and then aligning the limited resources we have with the livability and sustainability goals uh, that really make Colorado special. Okay, last question, Jesse from Seven. Um, can you just explain a little bit more about how it's going to prioritize these affordable units and first time home buyers versus just housing across the board as they come? The state a piece is more focused on the uh, housing that we support, which tend to be units that have an affordability component. So sometimes it's 100% affordability, sometimes it's 20% uh, with inclusionary zoning. 
uh, those are generally the kinds of projects that uh, the voters have allocated Proposition 123 money for, and uh, there are also uh, local response times and approvals that communities have to meet to access those dollars, and we want to align uh, other state dollars uh, towards these same goals. So again, there's a need for housing at many levels. With the resources we have, we can take action to reduce red tape and align the resources we have with our overall housing goals. But of course, there's a lot more work to do, but it is important that the state leads by example, uh, especially as more as, be, of, as being asked of local governments and many others, uh, we wanna make sure that the state has already bro broken down barriers to housing, reduced red tape, turned around funds quicker, and aligned uh, housing with thoughtful smart growth goals that improve livability and sustainability. Thank you to everybody. We are now going to sign the executive order. It's official. Yeah. Thank you everybody.